Salutations everyone! So, whenever new Pokemon games get announced, there are a lot of things that we anticipate, whether it be interesting Pokemon ideas, the main plot, or even new game mechanics. Now in the case for Pokemon Sun and Moon, we're still in the dark about everything, but that doesn't mean we can't speculate. And what better topic to dedicate this video than the legendaries of the series? Yes, legendary Pokemon are always expected in the formula of a Pokemon game, usually as one of the main focal points of the plot. And with only the trailer, the game logos, and a couple Koro Koro scans to go off of, it is honestly impossible to come to a real conclusion based on facts. Though, I think I can link some of this information we might have to a viable basis for the main legendary trio, and that's what this video is all about. Technically, anything is possible. When we think of the sun and moon, countless possibilities come up. The sun and moon are important symbols universally, with most cultures on Earth having their own myths and stories tied to them. Though in today's theory, I'll be focusing on a specific legendary deity that I think could influence the legendaries in this game. So without further ado, let's get this started. First off, let's go ahead and look at the information we have about Pokemon Sun and Moon. We do have a trailer, but there's not much to go off here. So my main basis lies in the logos for the games, more specifically the Japanese ones. As you can see, in the logo there happens to be a conglomerate of stars in space, and near the actual text of the logo happens to be a rumbus-shaped jewel, which at this point we don't know what it represents. Though I have a hunch that it will be of importance to the plot or the mechanics of the games. Another thing to point out are the version exclusive symbols, which kind of resemble the Pokemon Lunatone and Solrock. All of this is important, so be sure to remember all the points I've mentioned here, because I'll be linking them all in this theory. I must say now, coming up with all this information was a strenuous task, it took multiple days of research, and at this point I'm pretty confident with what I found. Okay, let me start off with the essentials here. I decided to take a more Japan-centric approach with the possible basis for our legendary trio, not on purpose, but actually by chance. While researching for another video, I happened to stumble upon some intriguing information that really opened my mind to new possibilities, and seeing how the sun and moon are important symbols in Japan, I was able to narrow down this possibility to a certain deification, which seems to be a promising basis in my opinion. And this entire story starts with the ancient Chinese astrological concept of the 28 lunar mansions. At the heart of this astrological concept, there are 28 lunar mansions which are divided into four cardinal directions. Within each of these directions are seven constellations. Another important aspect of this is that each direction is associated with its own celestial guardian, like the black turtle of the north, the red bird of the south, the white tiger of the west, and the blue green dragon of the east. This is the same for the four heavenly kings as well, which are Buddhist guardian deities. Long story short, Along with deifying these constellations, it was also a complex and accurate way for the ancient Chinese to regulate their calendar. Now, let's jump forward to around the mid-6th century in Japan, when the Yamato people began importing Chinese culture, customs, and religion. Along with this was Buddhism, Taoism, which would develop into the practice of Onyodo, and of course, we can't forget that complex Chinese astrological calendar. When it comes to the more receptive sects of Japanese Buddhism to take this in, it would happen to be the Shingon and Tendai schools. These two schools are the main reason for the development of star worship in the country, and by the mid to late Heian period, the practice peaked. Along with new Japanese additions to the original Chinese concept came significant changes. For instance, both schools devised their own artistic rendition of the 28 lunar mansions, with one of the main focal points of it being the Ursa Major. Soon enough, at the heart of all this will be a specific deification of the Ursa Major, Minor, and the North Star. This deity being Myoken Daibosatsu. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where my main topic comes in. Though, I'm sure some of you are pondering, what does this have to do with the Sun and Moon? Well, everything, honestly. You'll see in a moment. The Bodhisattva Myoken originates from an Indian deity, so it's considered a deva in Buddhism. However, the deity's development would soon become a bodhisattva of pure Japanese origin. If we take a look at the deity's name, it could translate to Heavenly Sight, Heavenly Eyes, Penetrating Sight, One Who Sees All, or just simply Good Eyesight. I'll explain this attribute in a moment, but firstly I must describe Myoken's background. In Japan, Myoken is literally the deification of the North Pole Star, considered as the central star controlling all other celestial bodies. Now, with the rise of the worship of the Northern Pole Star came a blend of various ideas from Taoism, Onyodo, and most notably, Esoteric Buddhism. Along with this crucial development, Myokin was now considered to control the lives and fortunes of people, protected the country and the emperor, warded off diseases, 
prevented disasters like fires, increased the span of people's lives, and last but not least, healed eye diseases. I know that was a mouthful, but that's how important Myoken Bosatsu became during that time period. Another important thing to note is that Myoken Bosatsu was taken by the samurai clans as a tutelary deity. Among the samurai class and the peasants, Myoken was considered the guardian of warriors, horses, and farmers. With that quick summary out of the way, now it's time to uncover Myoken's significance with the sun and moon. So throughout the manifestations of this deity throughout Japanese art, Myoken is either depicted as a woman or man with two or four arms. Moreover, Myoken is either seen standing on a dragon or a turtle with the snake embracing it, which has significant meaning. Some images show Myoken wielding a sword over her head, along with a halo depicting the seven stars of the Dipper. However, the oldest known manifestation is that of Myoken with four arms, one holding a sun disc and the corresponding one holding a moon disc. The last two hands tend to hold a trident and a Buddhist staff called a shakujo, either that or a brush and a tablet. Something important to point out is that inside the sun disc is a three-legged black crow and in the moon disc is a rabbit and a frog, pounding rice, or even sometimes making an elixir. In regards to the tablet and the brush, since Myoken watches over the behaviors of humans, he apparently writes down everyone's good and bad deeds, which kind of reminds me of Santa Claus to be honest. And lastly, there are some depictions of this bosatsu holding something known as a wish-fulfilling jewel, which honestly could add to the plot in a Pokemon game. But that's not all. The sun and moon discs actually have symbolism. Along with the creatures inside them, the sun disc is said to help eye-related illnesses and the moon disc to reduce fevers and cool down the body. These symbols fit Myoken since she's apparently the supreme celestial deity shedding light on the path to enlightenment. I should probably explain why we have a three-legged crow and a rabbit frog duo in these discs as well. The three-legged crow in ancient Asian cultures had been tied to the sun, this idea originating from China. In Japan, this icon soon became an important one in the Shinto canon as a messenger of the sun goddess Amaterasu, as well as a guide for Emperor Jinmu in his travels of Kumano. This black crow in Japan is called Yatagarasu and has a positive symbol behind it. Now, the rabbit being linked to the moon is also an origin from China as they saw a hare pounding magical herbs to make an elixir of internal life on the moon. This concept later exported to Japan, however, in depictions of the moon disc, they included a frog because it too is related to the moon, mainly because of the frog's bumpy skin. And according to some Chinese legends, there was a mythical frog of pure white that was tripedal and had a fungus on it which had the trait of longevity or something like that. This frog was said to be endowed with magical powers as well. I wanted to quickly summarize these manifestations of the sun and moon just to describe what I think the Pokemon Sun and Moon legendaries will take influence from. I feel the sun mascot will take some influence from the three-legged crow, and the moon mascot to take influence from either the hare or frog, or possibly a combination in a sense. And as a balance to these two mythical beings which possess some notable powers is Myoken. And for Myoken, there can be numerous design possibilities. She can either be depicted as a horse, since it happens to be the guardian of them, a turtle and a snake combination, a deer, since in early stories, Myoken appeared in the form of a deer to help her devotees, and plus, in many depictions, she wears a deer on her head. And, however, in other depictions, Myoken has a Shachihoko monster on its head, which is a sea monster often depicted with the head of a tiger and the body of a fish, though these forms deviate often when it comes to their base origins. Myoken could also have attributes of an eagle, since there are instances with the deity standing on one from the Edo period. With so much to work with here, having a combination of any of these things would build an amazing looking legendary. So, so far we've talked about these three points of interest and how they relate to the stars, the sun, and the moon. Now it's time to move on to the actual logos. Well, what if I told you that these two icons right here are the symbols of Myoken? That's right. They are also the family crest of the Chiba clan, which happened to have Myoken as a tutelary deity. And another thing to point out is that each icon has its own meaning behind it. Let's go ahead and look at the moon icon, which looks familiar to the actual Pokemon moon logo. This crest here is called the Tsuki Nihoshi, which means moon star. However, if you take a close look, there happens to be a moon, a star, and a sun in this image. So all these elements come together in one icon. Another name for this icon is Sanko, which literally means three lights. So this is referring to those three elements. Now, time to look at the other icon, which doesn't really resemble the Pokemon Sun logo much, but it has meaning behind it too. This icon is called a Kuyoboshi, which means nine stars. This is actually influenced by a concept 
called the nine celestial luminaries. So each of these represents the Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, Saturn, Rago, and Keto. Seven of these are considered as the seven celestial bodies, this excluding the last two, Rago and Keto. I would go into more detail about this, but I don't have the sufficient time at the moment. But when we take a look at the Pokemon Sun logo, we can see on the outer edge of it that there are eight beams, plus the circle in the middle. Now I'm not saying that this is referring to the nine luminaries, but it is a possibility. Though, they probably just did this for aesthetic purposes. Now, the last topic I need to mention are the jewels on the Japanese logos. And this is where I'm stumped a bit. The shape of it does resemble the Ursa Minor in some cases. For instance, look at a few of the examples I have provided on the screen. You can see it, but that doesn't really mean anything. Now, as I mentioned, Myoken sometimes carries a jewel that fulfills wishes. And in regards to the moon side, the hair and the toad are sometimes making a special elixir of immortality. These two important objects could be enough to explain the motives of the game's evil team and the severity of the plot, but that's all I have at the moment to tie the mysterious jewels of Pokemon Sun and Moon to the Bosatsu Myoken. There is so much more that I can explain, but this video is already getting too long, and I initially wanted this to be a quick explanation. But at least I was able to summarize the basics for everyone. So what do you think? Do you think Mjolken, the Moon Disc, and the Sun Disc are an interesting basis for the Legendary Trio? And if you have your own hunch of what the basis might be, please comment down below. I would love to hear your opinions. Other than that, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to support by liking or disliking the video. Also, if you're interested in seeing a list of some awesome Legendary Pokemon ideas for Sun and Moon, be sure to check out my buddy Arizo's video here. And with that all said and done, I'll catch you on the flip side.